This is Rebar, the venue where Nirvana's release party for Nevermind was held. The most notable thing about this release party is the fact that Nirvana was actually kicked out of the party. Yes, Nirvana was kicked out of their own release party. DGC arranged the release party, and interestingly, the guest list for the party included various people from Nirvana's previous label, Sub Pop. As a matter of fact, Sub Pop's co-founder, Bruce Pavitt, was actually a DJ for the release party. One of the heads of Nirvana's old label was DJing at the release party organized by Nirvana's new label. Kind of cool. There were lots of industry people at the event, but that's not what Nirvana was told the event was going to be like. According to Michael Azarad, the band was told it would be a low-key affair and that they could invite friends. They arrived to find the walls of the club plastered with Nirvana posters. They had to schmooze with all kinds of dull music biz types and endure hearing their album played twice in a row. The party took place on Friday the 13th of September 1991, 11 days before Nevermind was released on September 24th. Steve Wells, one of the owners of Rebar, recalls that the event went smoothly for about two hours, but soon after things began to fall apart. I noticed that Kurt, Chris, Dave, and others kept going up into the DJ booth and they were obviously getting drunker and drunker, way more than they could on beer. Then the free beer ran out, and things started to get kind of rowdy. After the band finished ripping all the posters off the walls, Chris heaved a tamale at Kurt. Kurt remembers retaliating with a salvo of guacamole. Soon, food was flying everywhere, with no regard for the industry geeks whose suits were getting splattered. It was around this point in time that the bandmates were removed from the venue. Chris Novoselic recalls him, Kurt, and Dave laughing about the fact that they had just been kicked out of their own record release party. Kurt, Chris, and Dave spent some time in the alley by the side of the building for a while, joking around and talking through a window to their friends who were still inside the venue. After a while, the Nirvana guys got into a limousine that their publicist, Susie Tennant, had rented, and they went over to Jeff Ross's loft where they continued to party, Jeff Ross being one of the people who printed many of Nirvana's t-shirts. Nirvana, however, was soon kicked out again, this time for setting off some fire extinguishers. They eventually ended up at Susie Tennant's house in the Capitol Hill area of Seattle where they closed off the night with a destructive final stand, one that included slingshots and eggs, microwaves, etc. A few days later, on September 16th, Nirvana played a show in Seattle, kicking off one of the North American legs of their Nevermind tour. Interestingly, Nirvana's Nevermind tour actually started on August 15th in Los Angeles, followed by 10 shows in Europe from August 20th to September 1st, meaning that Nirvana's Nevermind release party at Rebar happened a month after the Nevermind tour had already started. Nirvana's Nevermind tour would go on from August 15th, 91 to February 22nd, 92. In total, the band played in 15 different countries and had a total of 103 shows. It was a very successful tour, and Nevermind itself is one of the most iconic albums of the 90s, making the fact that Nirvana was kicked out of their own release party for Nevermind even more noteworthy. About 20 minutes walking distance from Rebar is another Nirvana-related location. This, however, isn't a place where the band had a concert. Rather, this is one of Nirvana's old practice spaces. This is the Screwdriver Bar in the Belltown neighborhood of Seattle. Prior to this being a bar, however, at various points in time between the releases of Bleach and Nevermind, the basement of this space served as a practice location for Nirvana. Today, it's a bar which occasionally hosts live acts. The bar pays tribute to its rock and roll history by decorating the walls with images of rock stars, including Kurt Cobain. They even have a Kiss pinball machine. It's been noted by many that Kurt Cobain, especially in the early days of the band, took practices very seriously. As mentioned, this particular former Nirvana practice space is in Belltown and is only a few minutes walking distance from the Crocodile, which is also located in Belltown. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what you see, make sure to subscribe for more. All the videos on this channel are original. I'm the one conducting all the interviews and editing all the videos together. So if you guys like what you see and you want to support, the best way to do so is honestly just to subscribe. Lots more to come.